yes. So with all that, with that foundation there that you've got rooted in, uh, you know, the connections with nature that were innate, to combine that with entheogens, with psychedelics, well, um, your, <laughs> your introduction yeah. on that realm, could you, could you take us yeah. that before we start to yeah. that yeah, well, um, I've known Kalindi for many, many years. We met actually when we were 19 years old, and that was in a martial arts class. Um, and so I see this beautiful young boy over here in the dojo doing this beautiful art that he's doing. And I just wanted to know what he was doing as opposed to what we were doing. I was in a Taekwondo class. I was pretty good, I might say. <laughs> But I seen this beautiful boy over in the corner doing some amazing stuff. And because I have a strong dance background, it looked like he was dancing. And I wanted to know more about it. So I approached the young man, Kalindi, and I said, show me some of this, what you're doing. I want to I be down like this. And he attempted to show me, but he was quite fresh and very mannish in his method in showing me. And so I became offended. And I told him so. And that started the 25-year cat and mouse case that we had before he finally got me okay so upon me uh becoming Kalindi's wife and his last name and carrying his last name Iyi Iyi means oracle and we know that when a name is called the energy of that name is created each and every time it's called so that's why the Africans named their children the names that they named them after particular moons and stars and trees and the earth and because they carry a meaning um my name ayana means beautiful flower and that's a, a word that just creates the energy around me every time you say it so oracle that just kind of went right with who i am and what i was doing but unknowingly so one day baba said here take this and it was five dried gams of mushrooms without any question or hesitation. I said, okay. <laughs> so that five grams changed the course of my life. Um, and I wanted to know more. I went into that space at five grams with him and being connected to him, I never felt so much love coming and, and emanating from a human being ever. And I just was connected to what I felt on that side. Um, it actually took me back into my mother's womb and I came back out into the, obviously it had to be the pyramids because I've seen the glyphs on the walls and I felt a little agitated in that five gram space because it was like, if you take more, you're going to be able to read what this is in these pyramids. I can see the light or the dim light of the, 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 the place where I was at. Um, it, it was just amazing. And so that began my journey into the psychedelics, my journey with Kalindi, and my journey into enhancing what was already inside of me through psilocybin. It just brought it to the surface. And the fear that I carried in knowing certain things um, started to dissipate because I started to understand more being you know, as Baba would say, just be more than what you are. And that's what it allowed me to be, be more than just this person here going to work, um, punching the clock, um, doing what I have to do, come home, cook the dinner, kiss the husband, go to work. And, you know, just the repetitiveness of what they tell us is the American dream. You know, I stepped outside of that box with Baba Kalindi and have been outside that box ever since. And um, I encourage so many people to just look around and open up their eyes and get outside of the box, you know. So <clears throat> um, the word Oracle, the name EE has a very, very powerful energy. Actually, the word EE, the name EE has its own language as well. I haven't quite gotten to that part. And I suppose Baba will reveal that to me in my next journey you know, the language of the ease. Did I answer that question okay? <laughs> she did marvelously, and more, plus more. <laughs> um, so sis, like, again, again, there's a lot from that, man. But um, I'm curious to know, you know, just as far as, you know, um, I'm assuming still that, that that period of time was in Detroit, when you was 19 and all the way through Cat and Mouse, doing that in, in, yes. in, in the States. Again, this being a, a taboo subject in our community, psychedelics. So you're delving into one realm of working with nature and nature's bones, so to speak. 
and then you're also delving into the, this empty clinic realm. Um, and obviously, Kalinde is publicly speaking about this, and you're there, and you're, you're you know, you're you're co-signing this. You know, how is that received in the community? You know, in, in that during that, during those early days, just the subject matter of psychedelics. Well, you know, you hear the word psychedelic and you think drug, you think hippies, you think people are just gone out of their mind again because of society, you know, and that's what Brava brought to this community, uh, which was to open up that, no, 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 not to open, but to kick open those doors so that people could have the knowledge that psychedelics is the way in and, and to get out of some stuff that we're in. It's the way in. <laughs> so early days. There go Baba Kalini talking that crazy stuff. He must be a drug addict. All of those drug addicts that are hanging out with them, you know, and the, the naysayers. And, you know, once he was, um, you know, the word hallucinate. Let's break down the word hallucinate. That simply means to wander through your own mind. You know, they tell us that we use 10% of our brain and the other 90% lies dormant. Well, hell, I want to know what's on the other side of that, inside of that 90%. And most people should be able to do that. But again, there's the word fear that comes up. So Baba was able to kick in those doors through education and information and constantly telling the people, our people, that there is so much more than what you can you can do for yourself than to live by the laws and the rules of the land, which keep you locked in the box. And it was a perilous journey. Baba would travel all over, leaving us for weeks and weeks at a time. Um, and sometimes in the household, it was feast or famine because of his studies and what he was doing. I always embraced his vision. I honored his vision, but I'm gonna tell you, the walk was not always easy in terms of what he was doing and what he was trying to do. Because again, you got the naysayers and you gotta be strong and you gotta throw your shoulders back and your head up and you gotta walk in your truth. And because I believed in the truth that he was saying, because I felt it and I understood it, I was on his side and I was kicking those doors down with him. So anybody that wanted to have a naysay, that gave me the opportunity to educate. If I had an audience and you give me your ear, I'm gonna change your mind. You know, um, and so we were able to do that. We were able to do that together. And as time went on, you know, we were able to open up our household to those meetings and have people come through and take their journeys. And we talked about it once a month and it started to spread like wildfire because I think something in our DNA just connects us to that energy because we are, we are magical people. And uh, this is a high level of magic. Psilocybin is a high level of magic. Um, it just it just takes you to a whole nother well you know i know that i'm talking to a group of people now who have already been uh inside of that place but for those who have not lose the fear come on and jump right on in and um i i i assure you that the information that has been imparted through baba kalindi and all the others the terence mckinnas and the dennis mckinnas and the you know uh the sabina and you know just to, to, to do the work because there is so much more uh, the community now is just all a buzz, not because of the loss of Baba. Well, yeah, the loss of Baba is huge, but the need to know more, to, to, to want to be more, to hear more, to feel more is very, very uh, prevalent in Detroit right now and the surrounding communities. So even with all that's going on, with all that's going on, you can sit inside of this energy of being a psychonaut and not have that fear that is prevailing on the planet right now. So giving thanks for having that um, foundation through Baba Kalindi's hard work and those who are brave enough to listen and honor it, um, we're gonna stand strong in this struggle and get this work done. You know, that, that was his message to continue the work. And through that, that's what, that's what we're doing. We're continuing the work on all levels. So many different little uh, communities have sprung up. The Psychonaut Academy of Detroit, you know, Michigan Psychedelics, uh, the Decriminalized Nature Group, you know, in out of Oakland in, in Ann Arbor. Um, we're on, it's a movement. It's a huge movement. You know, John Hopkins University. They just got awarded so many millions of dollars to do the studying. So so the work is is there. You know, 
you know, but it was a road to travel in the early years. It was a road to travel and he kept going. And that's what attracted me to him in the first place because he stood by the courage of his convictions. He believed in what he was doing, no matter what anybody said. And that even went down to martial arts. You know, African martial arts back in the day, are you kidding me? Africans didn't know martial arts, only the Koreans and the Chinese and the Japanese. What about Africa? Kalindi stood in that. He stood in it. He could have became commercial and did the uh, regular martial arts or the Korean martial arts, the Taekwondo, and, but he stood in that power and he used Indiogens to get his message across. And so now the African martial arts world is no longer a sleeping giant. It is awake and it's ready to continue to put the pulse, the continue the pulse based on the shoulders that they now get to stand on, which is. Ahati Kalindi Iyi shoulders that we're standing on now. Most definitely, sis. I'll show you. And I have to just follow that up because I, I bear witness and testimony to the efforts and energies the brothers put in over the years, just rolling with them for the period of time that I did. But to know, sis, you know, as you said, how magical and important this would be for our people. And although there's stuff happening has been happening in Detroit and a few pockets around the world, I guess. Um, Kalinde was the only brother who stood up and he traveled the world to sp spread this information. And he'd done this, was doing this before the internet, before, you know, any kind of publicity stunts or anything beyond research that's taking place, why people now jumping on this. You know, his, his path that he, he, he pathed out, paved out for himself, um, for us to follow through because there was nobody else. There was nobody else doing it and nobody else has done it. And, um, you know, like you said, it would be so easy for him to have copped out with the martial arts and done, you know, gone, gone the easy road, the easy route. And it might have... Absolutely. And, make and make tons and tons of money going commercial, you know? Sure, sure. But, but he stood in his belief, yeah. That's right, sis. And that, there's fruit, man. There's spores. Spores were spread, you know, and they've inoculated and they're colonizing. Just like when they originally arrived, it took many moons before they started to fruit. But um, his work and his testimony, his legacy, I'm, I'm, I know for sure, it continues and shall continue infinitely. And um, yeah. so we will feast. We will feast. You know, I know we will feast. Uh, you know, that those are our favorites. So we can feast. 